All right. My mom burned something in the microwave and now it smells like shit. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. That's like the worst thing. I don't microwave anything. I'll microwave popcorn, but I'm like sitting next to that thing 24-7 making sure that it just doesn't burn because my god. Please just don't rush this. <laughs> okay. All right. It's time for my FNAF rant. Are, are you ready? Because I, I got one. This concerns me. I know a lot of people aren't going to like to hear that, but this concerns me because it's coming out this year, which means it was in the same development timing as Ruin. And what that means is you can't put 100% into one thing and 100% into another thing. You're going to have to sacrifice from time to time. There's a few things I want to go over here. I was getting really excited that this was actually going to be like a, a, a rug pull and actually be part of the Ruin DLC and just be like completely crazy. Because you know, I guess minor spoilers for, for Security Breach, you actually walk in during the Pizza Plex, like you're down underneath like in like the back rooms or whatever, and you go into a room and it's literally Michael Afton's like lounging area. At the end of each night in sister location. Where he's eating popcorn and watching like the um. It's like a drama series. It's like a cartoon of Dracula and his wife. And a baby. And you actually, that's in Security Breach. So I thought that maybe this is like developing more into it. Because when you go in that room. And you scan the wall. It's got like a code and a pattern and stuff like that. But I was thinking maybe the DLC like it's connecting it together. And now, like, everything's coming together. Like, in the Ruin DLC, you're, like, going down even further. And it's like, oh, by the way, the Pizza Plex was actually built on top of this, which was built on that. I don't know. I was thinking it was going to be a rug pull. This was a huge different change that I wasn't expecting. Help Wanted is debatably the best Five Nights at Freddy's game. So, it's a lot to have a sequel like they uh, steel wool has a lot to to work on to live up to that and that's the thing is can they do that because they did people forget steel wool did the dlc for hello neighbor 2 and hello neighbor 2 by itself was trash and all that but like the dlc was bad as well to the point that they removed steel wool from like the credits so it's uh, and still wool like let's be real let's let's be real for a second Security Breach was not a good game. It was not a good game. I never played the thing, but I watched people play it, and I can tell you, when someone can put out a three-hour-long video essay on the uh, the way <laughs> the game works and doesn't work in ways and how it's poor game design, like, it was bad. And so when they said Ruin was free DLC, everyone's like, this is great because we're not paying for DLC for a shitty game that's broken. But also, like, since it's free DLC, the expectations... They could be anywhere. The game could be... The, the DLC could be amazing. It could be mediocre. It can be shit. It doesn't matter because it's free. So you have that mental thing. Then they went so long without doing anything. They did like a poster teaser. They had a website teaser. And they finally gave us a trailer the other day. And um, yeah. So let me read... I'm, I'm going to catch up on this. Um, I think Ruin is going to be a step up, but not amazing. Yeah, DLC barely even runs. Yeah. So... And that's the thing, right? So people got to remember, they got to tamper or temper their expectations when it comes to Ruin. Ruin is free DLC, so we don't know how long it's going to be. It could even be an, only like an hour, two hours long. But if it's amazing and it's actually scary and actually what, you know, we want it Security Breach to be, that that's great. That's perfect. We'll have to see the game comes out in July. I am really worried that... Hope 1 at 2 is going to be affected because of the Ruin DLC. I If Ru Ruin DLC isn't that great, it's a free DLC. Who cares? This is an actual game. This is a game coming out this year, and it's the sequel to one of the best Five Nights at Freddy's games out there that put Stillwell on the map, that got them a contract with Scott, that started this whole Vanny arc. I just... I'm skeptical. Because I, I, I'm really hoping I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure it helped one, it was lightning in a bottle. 
I do not trust Steel Wool with developing games. Uh, they seem like they had help when it handled, but like I said, that could have been a fluke. We'll only know. I know I'm being a negative Nancy, but I, that's just that's just what I think. And FNAF fans are eating this year. We got a FNAF movie. We all knew that I was coming, but then we got the teaser trailer the other day, and uh, it looks good. Like don't it, like it has to be good. I mean, they put so much money into the to the movie. It it has to look good at at least. If it's going to be good, I'm still like up in the air because I feel like the movie could suffer from what you know um, the game suffer, and that's the balance of is this for adults? Is this for children? I want it to be for both. You can't have your cake and eat it too. And I think that's overall going to affect the the FNAF movie. Because it can go from like it can go from scary to cheesy really, really quickly. And a lot of great for so Blumhouse did a movie called Megan that blew up and I saw it. And it was mid at best, and it would have been better than mid if it was rated R and they actually like didn't cut away every time someone died. But because they wanted a more marketable audience and because a lot of the kids like the TikTok dance, they decided to tone it back right at the end. And I'm just really worried FNAF is going to play it too safe. And that's my big worry because I'm a huge horror guy and I don't need it to be like blood and guts and everything. It can be PG-13, but they, they can't pull back. They really can't pull back. And I just need to see more, I guess is what I'm saying, in order to buy into it. The Red Eyes, I'm not angry about it. I know there's a lot of people that are actually like physically angry about the Red Eyes. I'm not angry about the Red Eyes. I just, I, I would rather them go in a different direction there have been a lot of fan edits already with the eyes being like pure black or like black with a little bit of, of a white tint that look really creepy and really cool. I think once again it goes into that if they're trying to play it towards kids more and they don't want it to be too, too scary. We'll have to see if this is kind of like a Sonic movie situation where they listen to fan backlash and change it up or if they stick to their guns. I would honestly respect them more if they stick to their guns and just let FNAF fans cry because their favorite Fazbear has red eyes instead of white eyes. I don't know. Um, but that's just my hot take. Looks good. I just don't like the red eyes. <laughs> I've seen all the renders of them with black eyes. Yeah. So, yeah. Like, I'm not, I'm not angry about it. But I can get why people aren't behind it. I think if they were, like... It's very stereotypical, right? Like, evil robots, red eyes. So, I think that's kind of why a lot of people are turning that down. And also, like, you can see them in the darkness, so that takes away the threat. And they're not, like, a really sharp red. They're almost like a light pink red, which is why I think it's funny everyone's saying they're, like, blazing and smoking it up. But, um, yeah, Ma Ma Megan was a silly movie. I think they're going to try to be silly in this, too. So, I don't know. My fingers are crossed. Like I said, Five Nights at Freddy's fans are... <laughs> it's 420 blaze it red exactly that that's that's the actual shade is 420 blaze it red so yeah i i'm definitely going to see it in theaters i'm definitely going to check it out i love that they're doing practical effects it sometimes it doesn't look great like when the foot stomps on the, like the the ball it doesn't look good but I'm not going to nitpick the shit out of it, even though I am right now. <laughs> but yeah, uh, FNAF fans are eating so well. They're getting DLC. They're getting Help Wanted 2. Probably going to be released as a holiday thing for uh, the VR system. PlayStation probably gave Steel Wool tons of money just so that way they could have more content on their VR library. Um, yeah, the, yeah, it was Foxy, wasn't it? The Fox, the, Yeah. And just because it was a practical effect, I just... It, you could tell, like, the foot was, like, kind of, like, too light when it went down. It wasn't menacing. It wasn't threatening. Um, but we'll see once they release a full, full trailer. Um, FNAF fans are eating because they got the, the, the Ruin DLC. They got the sequel to help want it. They got books coming out if you care about the books. And then you got the movie. Uh, the books are kind of destroying the lore right now and destroying people's theories and timelines, which is fun. I'm not, like... I don't play the games or read the books, but I watch all of, like, the game theories and stuff. I've been sucked into that since I watch Like, FNAF is such an interesting 
franchise to me because when I first started watching it, when when did the first FNAF come out even? Hold on, let me. I want to make sure I got my timeline right. Uh, 2014. Yeah, so. 2014, I was not young, right? Like, a lot of people that started with FNAF, they were, like, kids. Um, but then I watched a lot of Markiplier, and it was pushed in the YouTube algorithm a lot. I graduated from high school, so I was, like, a freshman in college. Uh, I remember vividly just sitting there watching Markiplier's Let's Plays with my family members. Everyone was laughing. My, even my mom was, like, jumping around, and my mom's, like, very, like, no cursing and stuff like that. And Markiplier's, like, shouting F-words and screaming at all these, like, silly little animatronics. And, like, it was a new thing at the time, right? 2014, this game was, you know, it wasn't FNAF fan games because FNAF didn't exist. So it did do something for me, as in, like, I was intrigued by by the game. I was intrigued by, by that type of atmosphere, the darkness... Uh, game theory, all that kind of stuff. But it wasn't like I was sucking my thumb holding like a like a plush. Like a lot of other of these kids, they, they have Five Nights at Freddy's plushes because it was their childhood. Which is also kind of crazy because it's a game about murdering children. But um, that's besides the point. So yeah, I don't have like a super, super huge connection with the franchise. But I've been an avid bystander for a while now. And so it intrigues me the trajectory of this is going. But I can tell you now, if Ruin is a bust, if Help Wanted isn't good, if the movie is also not good, that's kind of going to be it for me. I'm going to have to stop. I'm just going to have to have to call it quits. I'm getting too old. I'm becoming too much of a boomer. I, I really just don't want any part of if they're going to this really childish direction. So we'll have to see. As regards to, to, to this, um, it's not, like you said, it's not in 2D, which is great. It's got more of a 3D. Since it's a VR, I can't really judge the graphics all too much. But overall, it's going to it's gonna be a, a lose because it doesn't really show anything. It's more of just like teasing and it's on its way. I can't really give any merit to it. And like I said, I'm very concerned with Steel Wool's cap <laughs> capability of, um, of producing a good game. We'll have to see. It's a real hard we'll have to see. <laughs> Silly, scary, furry game go burr. Exactly.